Here we have a pine bed, this is a German bed, which we purchased second hand. And what we've done to, to make this an incline bed, we've raised the bed to the correct height, measuring from the uppermost point to the floor and from the foot end to the floor and the difference between the head end and the foot end must be 6 inches or 15 centimetres. We've used bed raisers plus an extra piece of wood to give us the correct height as this bed is uh, longer than normal beds. There are two ways of doing this. One, we can remove the slats and remove the rail that holds the bed slats and then place this rail on an angle from there to the bottom to the bottom of the rail so that this slat rail is on an angle. To achieve this we would need to add an extra two inch strip of wood to the base of the bed so that the rail would run on an angle inside of the rail to contain the slats. If we would then glue them and screw them, to remove the rail we would need to remove all of the screws and then use a wood chisel to ease, gently ease the slat rail from the side rail and you would place the, the slat rail on an angle down the entire length of the side rail. However, the method we're using today we're going to use a square and this will give us the angle to cut the side rails. I'll be demonstrating that in a minute. After correctly angling the bed, raising the bed to the desired height using packing pieces, we're using a square, or you can use a wooden square, cut an angled square. shorten this bed as well because my mattress is a little bit small. So we're going to shorten this bed by one inch. At the top. Of course we need to do this to the bottom of the bed. Which is a bit difficult. And now we need to remove all of the slats.
up rail was, was glued um, and we previously chased this with a, a broad wood chisel uh, to gently ease it from the Now we need to cut off the, the two ends that we've marked at an angle. to change the bracket angle so first we must bolt our bracket back on the bedstead in the original pins make sure they're nice and tight Produces the desired angle and strength. So make sure that the bracket is marrying with the, the bottom of the, the angled frame, and then we need to insert some screws. side of the chisel against the side rail.
go. Okay. Once you have attached all of the brackets at the correct angle to the to the frames, bolt the base frame up and give it a good pinch make sure it's nice and tight. This is the most difficult part. You'll need to use your square in order to make sure that your footboard is at the correct angle, in other words vertical. So you'll need help to do this. So you have your partner or a, or a helper just to make sure that that stays square and that will give us our correct angle at this end and now we will need to remove the old pins from the base and you'll achieve this by putting two nuts together bolting them up nice and tight and then you can ease out the pins from the wood. As you see they're just a joint wood screw. You just need to unlock them. remains true and our angled wood will give us the correct position for the headboard yes and then we'll need to measure in in this case it's 20 uh, 20 millimeters um, from the from the outside uh, to give us the position for the for the outside face of the side veil right, close up. to choose a drill make sure your drill matches the size of the of the pin not the actual size of the thread but the size of the pin because the thread needs to bite into the wood so when you try your drill in the in the hole it needs to be fairly loose and not a tight fit at all so it needs to be able to push it in and push it out if your drill twists if we have the next if we have the next size up if your drill twists as you push it in then you know that that drill is too big so you need the next size down. Yeah, you must go in and out. So now we need to drill the new holes. So you have to do this very, very carefully. checking on the depth of the hole a little bit more
the same procedure again. We tighten the two knots together. Make sure you go in at the, the correct angle. Just gently ease the screw in. Make sure that all of the wood, the wood screw, is actually inside the inside the joint. So there we have our original two holes at the base of the bed we've used the original two holes together with our angle bracket and this will make the appearance of the bed even next we need to secure the, the rails and for this we need to cut it down because our, our bed is too too large for the mattress so if we've, we've shaved off uh, two inches one inch either side as you can see we now have our footboard and our headboard vertical and our side rails are now angled uh, this is important we need to measure the distance between the top of our bracket and the floor and then we'll marry this up exactly on the opposite side so that we know that our bracket is going to be in exactly the same position when it's done so same again we're using the existing bolt holes at the base of the bed And again we need to come in 
20 centimeters. Having secured the two side rails at an angle, we now need to deal with the, the uh, centre slat support. And as you can see on this bed, there is a metal plate fitted to the end of the, the, uh, the slat support. So we'll leave one end intact. Uh, there's no changes required at the base of the bed. And at the top of the bed, we'll have to cut the, cut the end down to suit as we've reduced the length of the bed by tilting it to an angle and also we have reduced our bed by a further two inches. So all we need is a measurement in our case 79 and a quarter inches from in the We'll need to notch out the end. Thank you. 
a bit more strength to our bed and now we need to cut a wedge of wood so that it matches the slats. Now we need to trim off these slat rails. First of all, if you look closely, there's a recess and this is to take the plate that we fitted, the bracket. So we first of all need to need to saw down here. the end off. And we'll do the same for the other side. After applying the adhesive back in the same position Trim down the, the ends.
You'll need to shorten the top noggin uh, to suit. Best thing to do is to place the second, the second slot in place to make sure that you've got the right measurement. And then you add a little bit of the hard as nails. Pop the shortened noggin in for the top one. Placing close to the whoops, wrong way around. Placing close to the side rail. Wipe off the excess. And now our slot should fit and all the rest of the slots should fit. Right, first of all, you place the bottom slot and the top slot. Take a measurement for the top of the bed to the underside of the slot, which is eight, 18 centimetres. Take a measurement in from the bottom slat, which is four centimeters. So we know our angle will start there and we'll finish at the top. So now we need one more measurement, and that's the length of the we we'll use. And what we're doing is we're making the centre wedge to support the slats. Of course it has to be on an angle, the same as the slide rails we've placed. So we need okay. Yep, we've marked the wedge and now we're going to cut the wedge. Position the wedge uh, that we've just cut and um, we'll need to drill some fair size holes so that the screw can be screwed down so the hole needs to be as big as the head and you need to drill it about two thirds of the way down the timber so that your screw can still make a purchase into the, into the slot beam. For the top end obviously this is too big to drill down through so what we're doing here is we've cut a couple of noggins of wood and these will be fitted on the inside and we'll just pop a screw in there
and solid. Now we replace the slots. We need Our angle bed is now complete. And ready to take the mattress. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video. And please research inclined bed therapy. And visit inclinedbedtherapy.com for more information about this simple adaptation to the way we sleep and its incredible effects on human physiology and illnesses. Thank you. Andrew K. Fletcher